Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. Dobson 777A here. Last year I had an opportunity of a lifetime to ride on a carrier with my son who was uh, assigned to the USS Stennis. They had uh, a dependence cruise that was exactly a year ago, almost to the day. The USS John C. Stennis, right here, CBN 74. This is part of the Nimitz class carriers. And uh, this thing was deployed, I think it was in 1993. Um, and it, we were riding it because it was going back to have the um, nuclear reactors uh, changed out. It's about a 20 year life. But uh, these things were about uh, $8.5 billion. So here you are, two nuclear reactors, four shafts, about a little bit over a thousand feet, 134 foot wide, 97,000 tons. It can go over 30, probably over 35 miles an hour. Ship's company. 3,200, air wing 1,500, and another 500. So you add that up, that's 2,000. That's 5,200 people. So they got uh, Sea Sparrows, Phalanx, uh, Ram uh, aircraft around 60 plus. There's a number of Nimitz class carriers in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten carriers. And now they're just starting to do the uh, Gerald Ford class. Uh, you know, 20 year old carriers, uh, not, not the latest, greatest stuff. My dad was a chief warrant officer on, you know, the Kennedy, the Roosevelt and uh, several others way back in the seventies, which I think every one of them are gone now. I had one opportunity when I was about 16 years old that I was going to get to ride from like Virginia down to Jacksonville. And at the last second when they were crossing, uh, the Atlantic to come back. They had a gone through a terrible storm and uh, some people actually got killed. And so the, the thing was canceled abruptly. So I had to wait, I think it was about uh, five years ago, my son had an, an opportunity for me to ride a carrier from uh, Hawaii. And I thought, oh my God, that would be awesome. I'd love to go across the middle of the ocean. And it was gonna be a little bit longer cruise than the normal dependence cruise too. And uh, something came up where they redirected the carrier over to Syria. This was back during Obama's reign, and so it, that got canceled. So here I am, still like in my 50s and couldn't make it on a carrier. Well, last year I finally got my chance. So I want to. I took a bunch of video, and I'm kind of splicing some things together, and I hope you enjoy it because this is something, especially working in, as a military contractor, I worked on a lot of stuff that was associated with uh, where I could see it on the ship. I could see it in operation. I could see, you know, planes taking off and landing right in front of me. I can't even believe they let us do this, but it was amazing. So I hope, I mean, I honest to God, I, I hope everybody that's in the military just stay safe because it's like one of the most dangerous jobs in the world on top of a deck of a carrier. It's amazing. Um, how close everybody is and and what they're dealing with uh, in a heartbeat things can happen you can watch all kinds of videos of uh, things that have gone wrong on carriers but in any event uh, I I really am impressed with the way uh, these guys perform and I mean they're all kids to me now they're it's it was fantastic I enjoyed sleeping in these uh, coffin-sized bunks that they had. I enjoyed eating with everybody. It was great. It's not for everybody, folks. Let me tell you, that is some tight quarters. Um, and, you know, even when you're trying to sleep at night, that birthing area is people going in and out all hours of the day and night because it's they don't have like a birthing area where, you know, this is like first shift and another one the second shift, and another one's third shift. It doesn't work like that. So this is uh, quite interesting, but uh, all right, well, let's get on with the show. I, I start from the beginning because I'm in North Georgia. I decided instead of uh, renting a car, I rode a one of these big double decker buses that was uh, relatively inexpensive from Atlanta to Jacksonville. That was an adventure of its own. And we went through fricking hurricane force type winds. And then, you know, 
there, there's just some other interesting things that happened just leading up to it. So I got some snippets of all that. So I hope you enjoy the show. This again was just a fantastic opportunity. And I thank my son. I hope to get to do this again. I had uh, gotten my tickets and I was able to get right on the top of this uh, bus and uh, right in the front seat. And I had no idea what we we're gonna be running into, but this was uh, around South Georgia. We went across an area and if you're familiar with South Georgia, it's just absolutely completely flat. A lot of tornadoes and everything go right through this area. When you drive down uh, 75 or up 75 in this area, you'll see trees that are always just snapped right at off the top or falling over or whatever because this is just a really bad area but we happened to hit one of these squall lines coming through and this bus was being blown all over the place and I couldn't believe the way some of the other folks were driving you know passing in this kind of thing this was um, horrible uh, we ended up stopping um, after we got through this at uh, one of these uh, truck stops that had food and everything but the power was out and so you couldn't even get any refreshments or anything. This bus, the roof leaked like a sieve and people in the back, all their stuff on the floor was getting soaked and there was not much they could do about it. This doesn't have like airline bins up at the top. And so again, fortunately, since I was at the front, I wasn't having that issue, but some of the people were actually getting rained on in their seats. This was a, a, a terrible start to the trip, but it was, uh, uh, comical the way this was going and I figured well, this is one of many things so waiting to get on the Tiger Cruise and it decides to rain they got no buses for us it's a beautiful thing luckily I rem decided to get an umbrella today everybody's getting soaked though Well, this is what I get to do. I get to ride on a carrier for about a week. It's USS Stennis. That's pretty sweet. I've been on some of the older carriers, but I haven't been on the newer generation ones. So we were able to get on and get all my stuff squared away and uh, they weren't going to be leaving until the next day. So we decided to go into town because my son had been stuck on the ship for you know, weeks and uh, we went and got a nice steak dinner and uh, this was the view when we got back. I just thought it was uh, stunning at night seeing this thing lit up. So. Well, we're up on the top of the flight deck of the USS Stennis and we're looking across the harbor here. Shouldn't say harbor, the berthing area. We got all these beautiful ships here. And we come around this way and you can see the flight deck. Got this sucker loaded. Yeah. I want to go over here and see these E2C Hawkeyes. I got them in the back. You can see one of the props right there. There's another one right over there. See the one with the ray dome on there. Oh, there's another one down there. They got three of them. I counted up like 14 different radars. It's a tremendous amount of uh, stuff on these masts. They got three phalanx and various types of uh, missiles on this ship as well. I have to see if I can get close to a phalanx. It's a lot of stuff I worked on uh, when I worked for Raytheon. The ship across from us, this thing actually can sink like 20 feet down in the back and they can bring boats and things in the back. It's pretty cool. It looks like it's going through a cleanup right now. It's an E2C Hawkeye. It's got like a massive radar. It can fly cover over the whole fleet. 
and they can look out for miles and miles and miles with this thing. Look at how the wings fold up on this and look at the massive props on this. It's really slick. This thing over here is a growler. This is for electronic warfare, jamming and everything. It's got tons of electronics and stuff. It's not a, uh, doesn't have any weapon systems or anything. You blow up other people's radars and things, just jam everything up. This is my son's helicopters over here. It's all search and rescue. It's lifesavers for the pilots. Got my name on here. <laughs> it's pretty slick. No creature comforts in these things. Get all the controls. So all those bombs on there indicate uh, the size of the ordnance that was dropped and how many. Let's go to this other one. And this one would indicate they had uh, three 500 pounders and one thousand pound bomb. This is the growler and this is showing what they destroyed with the little lightning bolts. You know, various electronic type equipment, radars, whatever. That's pretty slick. So this is a phalanx system. This just, it's a Gatlin gun. It just shoots gobs and gobs of lead out. Any targets come out. And then those are missile launchers right next. And then we're standing right next to 40 50. Millimeters. Oh, 40 millimeter. 40 millimeter gun standing right next to it. Pretty sweet. This is an FA-18 Super Hornet gun system. Check out this picture, amazing. Well, we're finally underway and got an escort. He's filming us back, see that? So, so far I have about uh, 15 minutes of video and uh, I started working on this last year right afterwards and I only did uh, part of it. I sent it out for my YouTube channel, but uh, I don't know what it is. This really makes me emotional, but this is some really powerful stuff seeing what these kids do and seeing the equipment that I worked on. So I hope you're really enjoying this because this is amazing to me.
got a little super slow mo from my uh, cell phone. the 
catapult running all the way back to the front of the ship. of the ship that water is blue as can be all right we're about to do a full speed run so this is like the pre part. We're just doing a little turn right now. But it looks like they might have cranked up some of the, uh, one of the other shafts. I think there's four shafts, 20 feet in diameter. And we're run by two nuclear generations, each generators, each capable of probably eight megawatts each. They can't just give full throttle immediately. It takes like eight minutes or so to spin this thing up. So this will be kind of interesting as we get going. But we're probably going about 15 miles an hour right now. All right, we can see a big change right now. The uh, Started up. I can really feel the power off the fan tail here. Four 20 foot blades or 20 foot uh, props. Now we're doing about 30 miles an hour. That was double from when we first started. speed run we're about uh, 32 miles an hour right now it's a 
nuclear reactor it could do this all day long. He's got the thing cranked up even more now. They're going to do an emergency stop too, so this ought to be pretty exciting. I bet we're going over 36 miles an hour. It's pretty fast. Hard to believe a carrier this big can go this fast. This is reverse now. Yeah, this is the reverse. Look at the fresh smell of water now. It's oxygenated. So I'm back from the USS Dennis. What a great trip. It was so cool to be out there with those young men and women, all in their uh, basically 20s and 30s. It was amazing the job that they can do. The air show was amazing. I still can't believe I got to be about 30 feet away from where an F-18 was landing. That was incredible. As I was doing this last editing and putting that last bit after I had uh, gotten back and just listening to the quiet and that's one of the reasons why I moved where I did. Um, even even where I lived in uh, west coast of Florida, it was just loud. Everything was loud. Even in the morning when I was going to work, even oh dark 30, it was like the Indy 500 starting up. It was just loud. Where I'm at, it is just quiet and peaceful. It's amazing how loud it was on the ship. Everything, you know, there's always people on on those uh, squawk boxes talking to everyone and uh, just lots of jet noise, everything. Lots of just huge equipment running all the time. Um, just, it takes a lot to get used to that. And I, I think it was a stark contrast when we got to the end, how quiet it was out there in my garden. So 
anyways, uh, that was a blessing to have that opportunity to do that. And I, I hope you enjoyed this, but I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless. Thank you.